This video is looking at cloud versus the traditional type of systems. There are three points on the specification that we need to know. Device synchronization, online or offline working, and notifications. So first of all, device synchronization. So basically synchronization is when we can access the same files in different places. But what we need to make sure is that they all update at the same time. Otherwise, someone could be working on a different version of the file that isn't up to date. So what synchronization basically does is it copies the, the same file to multiple devices via the cloud. So this means that we've got a backup on all of the servers, but also allows us to work on the same file on multiple devices. So you can see in these two pictures that the cloud is allowing these all these devices to work on the same thing. And at the bottom, you can see that those three devices are all viewing the same file. Now, some example products that do this kind of thing are Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive, iCloud and iTunes. They will basically back up all of the files in real time so that you can then access them on other devices. An example of where you might use synchronization is exactly now as we speak. So I am making this video online. I have gone onto my OneDrive where I've saved this file in Microsoft Office. Uh, I'm editing it online, but then I think it's going to be a lot easier for me to insert audio on the offline version. So I click on edit in desktop app and then it lets me open it. So you can see the bottom right hand picture says what do you want to open it with i press powerpoint and it opens powerpoint on my computer any changes that i make on the powerpoint version automatically update in the online version as well so this stops anything being lost or if anybody else was to try and edit the online version it makes sure that that's constantly up to date So some examples of software that we can look at for cloud-based and non-cloud-based uh, software. So the first one is non-cloud software. So this is things that we use offline. We don't use them on the internet. So obviously we've got things like the operating system, like Windows and Android. And that's pretty obvious that we're not going to be on the internet for those because not everybody has the internet on their phone. So you need the computer to be able to load up and be able to open up programs without being online. Some of the more powerful um, memory intensive pieces of software, so things that use a lot of resources on your computer, they are often non-cloud software as well, like Photoshop, Illustrator and Premiere Pro to edit videos. These pieces of software are need to be run on your computer because they use too much processing power. Also, any apps that you go on that don't need an internet connection are obviously going to be non-cloud based. So examples of cloud software are things like Office 365, Google Docs, some accountancy software which is used for finances and money management. So Sage is an example. Any multiplayer games that you can play online and basically anything at all that runs through your browser. So when you're on Google Chrome and you're going to certain things online, they are all cloud-based software. When we think about offline versus online working, you've got to think about a couple of things. So offline basically means that we're not using the cloud or the internet at all. This is sometimes called a traditional way of working because it's what people used to do what people were doing for a very long time some software that uses the cloud like office 365 for example actually allows you to work offline as well as we showed before you might do this because sometimes the offline fire and um, software has a few more features so it might just be a little bit easier to control a little bit easier to work and find what you're looking for problem is when you're working offline Often on some programs, you've got to save the data manually. So even though it might look like you're working offline, 
on some Office 365 programs, you can actually still be saving live to the cloud and maybe you don't realize. When you reconnect the files and the, all of the files and data will automatically get synchronized back to the cloud. So if you don't have an internet connection, everything will automatically save as soon as you get an internet connection again. The problem with this is that sometimes you might lose your data before uh, the connection can be re-established. So just to look a little bit more in depth at this word traditional. So traditional means kind of the normal long lasting way of doing something. So for example, at Christmas, the traditional thing is to give presents. The traditional thing is to put a Christmas tree up and so on. In IT, traditional is the way things have kind of always been done until the newer, more modern ways of working came along. So before people started to use the cloud and before they started to save things online, everything used to be saved locally to the hard drive or to your network. And basically that was the traditional way of doing things. So when we talk about traditional, we tend to think about working offline rather than online. So if we do a little comparison of using the cloud versus traditional computing, which would be saving things locally onto your device or computer. So first of all, if we look at the feature, so let's start with cost, because that's the easiest one for everyone to understand. If we look at cost, the traditional way would mean that you needed to buy all the hardware yourself. So you would have to buy new hard drives, new servers, new equipment to save the files yourself. However, with the cloud, obviously we can massively reduce all of the costs on equipment by renting them from other companies. When we look at ownership, it's like who actually owns all of the equipment and everything. Obviously, it's going to be owned by you with traditional because you've bought it yourself. Whereas with the cloud, it's owned by third party company. Excuse me. So security. Basically, when we look at security of the data, you would need to be responsible for that for yourself. So you would have to hire specialist security staff or specialist engineers to protect all of the data. However, with the cloud, Obviously, it's that third party company that is responsible for the security and they will hire all of the specialists that do that. So in other words, you can be a little bit safer in the knowledge that your data is being kept secure. For software, we need to look at who is going to manage the software on your computers. If you are using a traditional method, you're going to need to install and set up all of the software yourself. With the cloud, any software is all installed by the third party. When we say third party, by the way, that means the other company. So for example, Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure or Google, they are the companies that would be responsible. When we look at updates, so this is every time something needs to be refreshed or updated to make better, to fix any issues, you would have to do them all yourself. However, with the cloud, all of the updates will be done by the third party. So overall, I would say the cloud is a lot easier for people who are non-specialists. So if you don't really understand IT, you don't really understand the equipment and the setup, the best thing for you is going to be to use the cloud. However, if you are an expert and you feel a bit more confident doing things yourself and you're only a fairly small business, it might be better to use a traditional method. Final point on the spec for this, uh, this section is notifications. So we just need to know what is meant by notifications. These are basically used to inform you that anything might have actually happened, anything might have taken place. So anything that's new, like an update to a particular file or someone is working on the same piece of work as you, it's called a notification and it's going to alert you to let you know that something has happened. So some examples are things like when you update security and it's going to pop up and tell you that you need to do some sort of update or that they are taking, uh, actually carrying out one of the updates. You can get email alerts, 
to suggest that you've got a new message come through. You can also get things on social media, which you're probably very aware of, to say that someone's liked your photo or commented on your post or whatever. Online services. Sometimes you could get this if you're a business. It might pop up and say that your payment has failed or that someone else's payment has failed or that someone's made an error when they've created an order. 